Socialism didn't work in Germany. And you are going to tell us how it failed. But go and also learn from China how socialism works. And it has succeeded in China. It doesn't mean if it has failed in Germany, it will fail everywhere else. We are not Germans. We are South Africans. In China, they've got socialism with Chinese characteristics. <laughs> what stops South Africans from having socialism with South African characteristics? Learning from Germany. What worked, what did not work. Take the good things, leave the bad things. Why capitalism always resort to Chinese principles, I mean to socialist principles, every time they get into trouble? When the banks failed in 2008 and put the world into a financial crisis, it was socialist principles that took the world out of that crisis through state intervention. Where was capital at that time? If we go now, we are in Pretoria now, let's go to commercial crimes or go to liquidation or high court and all of that. Every day without fail, there are private companies that are being liquidated there. Who said if it's capitalist owned or private owned, it's inherently successful? Who said that? So it's an, it's an ideological debate we can have. We know what happened in Eastern Germany. We know what happened in the Soviet Union. We know what's happening in China. We know what's happening in Cuba. So we can have a, a deeper discussion about whether this uh, is really a way out. We, we sometimes get fixated on concepts, but in reality you do the things that you say you don't want to do. Every time capital gets into problems, the state must intervene. Every time. That's when you now see the importance of socialist uh, principles. Coalitions in South Africa will work. Quite, you know, um, this thing is a new thing to us. We don't know it. And, and we are learning on the job. We are learning on the job. So please be patient with us. We have succeeded so far. No municipality has actually completely collapsed. Uh, to a point of uh, uh, having to be resuscitated by an upper government under coalition. So, it's a new thing. We're learning on the job and we'll get it right. The problem is not coalitions. The problem is the ANC and the DA. They are so used to power. And when they now get out of power into a coalition, they still want to behave like they are in power. Coalition means power sharing. You must let go. Don't behave like you still have power when you don't have power. You must share. And we will make the best a coalition partner because we have never been in power. So we don't know power. Maybe the first power we are going to experience is through coalition and it will be the first experience. But those who are used to controlling power, when it shifts, they are still in denial and they want to behave like they still have power. And it leads into the problems we see uh, in, the, in the coalitions. At the center of a problem is the ANC. It has been in power for too long. When it gets removed into a coalition, it is in denial. Same thing as the DA. That suffers from white supremacy. That in coalition with black people, a white person must lead. That white supremacist mentality is what causes problems for us in coalitions. But otherwise, coalitions will work. And coalitions are the best thing for me. I think we deserve that. Where no one has got an absolute majority. We all govern through consensus. And we look at what is in the best interest of our people. Because too much power corrupt. And that's what we have experienced since uh, 1994. The same thing with the European Union. Uh, don't say, what are we going to ask from you? That's a big brother mentality. What are you going to ask from us? Yes, don't say, we, why should it be us who are asking? We're not asking for anything. We're fine. So, 
let's relate as equals. Not as a beggar and uh, the big brother supplier. No. We will relate with the European Union. It's a necessary body. We'll relate with it. We'll respect it. And the respect must be mutual. And we'll engage on what is in the interest of our countries. Not what is in the interest of the European Union. We're in a mess now. We've decommissioned uh, our power stations because uh, countries like the USA, uh, like the UK, have said to us, no, do away with these things. We are going to introduce uh, green energy. Yes, the money and all of that. People took the money. There is no electricity today. So we ought to relate as equals so that no one imposes their ideas on us. We are people that subscribe to superior logic. Anything that is scientific, anything that has been proven, anything that makes sense will agree with it. It doesn't matter whether it comes from European Union or it comes from BRICS or it comes from China or Russia. No, we will not agree with anything that seeks to belittle us and make us uh, look like we are beggars in this kind of a relationship. So that's the same with Agoa. You can't use Agoa to threaten us in terms of our sovereignty and our foreign policy. That if you are going to bring uh, Putin here and not defy will do away with our goa. You can do away with our goa. We remain with our sovereignty. Should you strip us of our dignity because we are disparately looking for our goa? That our foreign policy is now determined somewhere else. Which nation can be proud of that? That our foreign policy is determined somewhere because we are beneficiaries of our goa. It can't be correct. Let, let's, let's trade uh, and have those benefits of Agoa out of mutual understanding and respect for each other's sovereignty and foreign policy. Not that today because we don't agree on Putin, you must withdraw the whole thing. That is puppeting. That is belittling. That is making us look like we are beggars. But le let's remain with our dignity. Let's be beggars with dignity not stripped of dignity and thinking that you are what you are not. You can't even make your own foreign policy determinations because Agoa will be taken away. 